Good morning, Trivers, and for some inexplicable reason, I'm out in the workshop at 3 a.m. having a look around, trying to work out what I need to do for the day. I can't sleep, so I thought I would rip out a very quick update video for you. So that's the shed wall. We've got 4.05 volts to 4.7 volts, so it's very balanced at the moment. Uh, still in the same situation, not really running much stuff, just lights and fans for now. Um, it's just taken about 8 amps, well, 7 amps from the batteries. Uh, and I've only just walked out here, so it hasn't been on all night. And then my house battery, I've got, where's that Watchmon 4.2? There we go. So my house battery is running a lot better now. It is school holidays at the moment, so we're absolutely taking a bunch of power out of this battery every day. And there's nothing running inside the house other than the static load, so that's running, what, a couple of hundred watts there. Uh, 153 amp hours out of the battery so far tonight, because we are running a air conditioner, but I guess it's cooled down enough to turn the air conditioner off. I've also added another six 190 watt panels to all the rest of the panels I have up here on the shed roof just to bump the charging amps just up a little bit to cover the load. Anyway, back to the point of this video. Let's spin around here. Uh, we had one of the community members, now I can't remember which post it was, but wanted to know voltage at night time of the input and the output to the solar panel. So there's 2.3 volts almost there. Um, so that's the output. Outgoing or incoming power, it doesn't matter, it's still both connected. Uh, if I can actually do that with one hand, there we go. So I've got about 2.2 volts. So to whom the person wanted to know that information, I'll see if I can link it below. Uh, that's actually turned off. We are at three o'clock in the morning, half past three in the morning. So I hope that answers your question for you. There is power going out. I have no idea why, don't understand it. Um, we also have a couple of inverters. Uh, now these were $150 jobs off eBay, I believe. And this one's a Lantron. Now I've never even heard of that brand before, but it is a hybrid inverter. Now, unfortunately in Australia, I can't do anything with 240 volt or high voltage, and this is high voltage, so I won't even be able to test it for a few weeks. But if there's any Sparkies around that are available this weekend, hit me up, come and have a play. Um, or maybe next weekend. Uh, it does it does look like it's been messed with a little bit, but we popped the cover off earlier and all of these were very loose, like they were finger tight. Now, the person that we bought it off said they were having it run the shed and said it was run running when they removed it from, you know, service. Uh, we all know how that story goes, right? <laughs> so I took a risk, 150 bucks. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Hopefully I can make a few videos out of it and see what happens. But it looks really clean inside. There's no dust buildup. There's no there's no burnt up PCBs or anything like that. Of course, we don't know if a relay or something's broken. But I guess once we power it up, we'll see an error message if there is indeed one. There's not much information on it. I can't really see a model number. So Googling it so far has come up with a few photographs, but not much else. Um, on that side, there's nothing... Give you a good shot at the bottom. Now we didn't get a cover for here and we didn't get a cover over the 240 volt, which I'm a little bit disappointed. There's one over the DC in. Uh, we might be able to 3D print something or bend something up. Whoops. We might be able to bend something up. Now there is a cable underneath here, so I'll pop that off. I have had this open before. A little cable there. And the glue is broken on that as well when we first popped it off. Now have a look around. I'm not even gonna to pretend to know what I'm looking at. So the little USB board there. That is the DC cutoff. We've got one, two, three lines coming in there. So we've got shared negative and the positive. So I dare we say we've got two MPPT trackers with those there, just because we've got the two cables out of here, it does indicate to me that there's two separate lines. They're also coming over here in separate lines as well. So this must be the DC board. Um, the AC. I'm not sure, we've got a bunch of relays there, but as you, if, you, if you can see anything there that's, you know, burnt up or anything, I certainly can't. There's not much to it. There's no discoloration. Might have to Google a couple of those board numbers and see what they come up with. It might give me a little bit more power, a little bit more information. Motherboard power 3.0. At least it's not the first version. 
it's encouraging nothing much more there that i even understand or know about so we get a zoom shot underneath there but yeah so if this one works uh, i have been looking at a pip inverter for in here Oh, there's another one there. This is just as much for me to have a look around and see what I can find. Um, the the sort of in the plan in my head for that one is to put it up there. I should better remove that one. Uh, get some. I think this turns on at about a hundred volts. Have to turn that around. Caution, caution. So we've got generation power 5,000 watts. So it's a 5,000 watt inverter and it does 2,500 watts for the off-grid side. Now if, it, if, now, if it'll actually run without the grid, this will be a very cool little toy for the shed. Only 2,500 watts, but that's brilliant because I don't want to actually put anything back in the grid because I'm not allowed to. Um, I'm already at my limit for that in Australia. And I think it'll actually turn on at 100 volts which means I can do the DC side. I cannot do the AC side. But it does look like it's been messed with a little bit. This screw here, you can see underneath there, it's all chunked out. And it's actually from in here. So there should be one screw there, one screw there, and one screw there holding this on. But there's only one screw, and they've used one of it there. So it's a bit of, a bit of tomfoolery that's gone on with that inverter there. What do you reckon? Um, I'm, there is nothing more on that. I don't think it's just a massive heat sink on the back. Just for reference, if anybody can find anything on that, hit me up, let me know. If you want to help out or come around, have some fun with that, let me know. Uh, I've got another clamp meter. Hoping it's got a much higher resolution than this one, so I can actually do some tests on, what are they, 1S, the Delhi Green Balances. I've ordered seven of those. They should be here whenever they get here. Um, so I'm going to run a 7S Deli Green Balancer on this before I change this to 48 volt for that because that is a 48 volt inverter. And then hopefully I'll get uh, a bit better resolution like I said and I can do some more tests and work out exactly and share the results on how much they energy you, on how much energy <laughs> on how much energy they use idle. So the hope is so that's 2 amps uh, zero that out we can work out from the bait room. 0 0.016 of an amp. That's the drawer on the bait room idle. Uh, so I want to work out what that deli green balancing current is and stuff like that and what it is idle. Because I know it's quite high and it's got a very, very high accumulative drawer over a 24 hour period. But what else have we got? We've got this one on the floor. Now this is an GrowWatt SP200, I think. We'll have a look on the side. Now this is an off-grid inverter as well. well. I think it's a AC coupled, so GrowWatt SP200. And this one we can actually grab where, this is my little power board for that inverter there. So you can plug this one in just with the, It's a Storage Plus model. And it flicks through a Holoper screen saying reversed and whatever else because it's got nothing on it. So this little inverter here, I believe it is just AC coupled. So the AC, the, the solar comes in here. It's in between 100 and 450 or 550 volts or something will turn it on. And then outputs it back out to the inverter here. So it sort of loops around with a couple of cables. Input solar, output solar. And the way I believe this one works, and this is very interesting, and I was actually trying to buy one of these. Uh, there was only one, we needed two. So th again, this is not mine. This is only a borrowed unit. The other one is mine, I bought that. Um, it's got the battery in, 48 volt once again. RS485 Lancom NTC sensor. I haven't done much research on this one either. But this one did look like the better unit than the other one that I bought just for you know ease of installation and stuff like that but yeah that's, that's another one i have to play with so tubers i hope that is a bit of an update on what i'm doing and stuff like that if you've got any questions feel free to ask them below and i will see you on the next one
In 2020, I'll be showcasing as many other projects as I can. So head on over to www.diypowerwall.com on the Facebook group and start your project thread today. Cheers, and I hope you enjoyed these projects.